So I'm still experimenting with this indoor lighting situation. Looks a little grainy, a little washed out in my um, in my monitor. So I don't know. So it's December. It's the after the first week of December. I've been really um, busy um, with work. So I haven't really had a um, time to really um, explore any new um, decks for this for this month. So what I did do because I, I knew I was going to be busy, um, I pulled out tarot and oracle decks that I already had worked with that I knew that I know very well for my daily draws and um, readings or whatever it is that I'm doing. The first one is not here. It's Rider Waite, Commemorative Centennial, the one I always use, right? Um, the other tarot deck I returned to for the month of December thus far, because you know what, this may easily change. After I, after I record this video and upload it, I might go to my um, shelf and decide, oh, you know what? I want to work with different decks instead of the ones I just talked about. It's just the way it is. It doesn't matter. It's great because then I end up sharing different decks in my next video about it. But one that um, maybe I should share a little bit about what headspace sometimes I get into. When I'm really busy and stressed with work, um, with things that are not um, hobby related or whatever, I have this weird knee-jerk reaction where I go to my shelf I look at all my decks and I think oh, I need to get rid of these because I have no interest in them it's um it's a bizarre behavior or not, I, I don't let it I don't do I don't complete the behavior but it is a really bizarre thought process where because I'm busy occupied pre and preoccupied with other things that I suddenly then look at uh, my decks, my books, mainly mainly the decks, right? And think, oh, giveaway pile. All of them. It's that um, that purging headspace, right? And that usually tells me, oh, whoa. If you're in that purging headspace, you need to step the hell away from your shelf and leave it the hell alone. So that's where I'm at. So lately, um, for this first week of December, um, the first deck that um, I pulled out of the purgatory basket, I call it. It's where I put decks um, aside because I'm not sure whether I want to keep them or not. Or rather, I think I might want to, you know, move them along. But question myself as to why if I was so happy when I obtained them and I have enjoyed using them you know what I'm saying anyway so the the one deck that I'm one tarot deck that I'm working with um, is my my copy this is of the Aquarian tarot and this summer I scored uh, this I think it's still available on Amazon if this is of interest to you um, I got the Italian version um, because, well, one, I'm fluent, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, and because it was the only full-size Aquarian tarot that was available on Amazon this past summer. I don't know. Like, there was the Aquarian tarot in a tin, which, to be honest, um, I wasn't, I didn't want because I don't like the current printing of the Aquarian Tarot because it has the white borders around the backs. Yeah, I'm back to that. I was so, I had a feeling that these would be, but I couldn't have been happier when I received these last summer, this past summer, and the backs have no white borders. Look, I love this back. I love this back because I knew people who read with these cards way back in the day. Um, 
I didn't. I, I, I read with Rider Waite, and like I've said probably a million times before, okay, that's hyperbole, but I've said it all, you know, on and on and on and on, that for many, 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 many years, I just read Rider Waite, the plaid back, and then Morgan Greer, and then the commemorative centennial. Um, but this is an iconic back to the cards, because I've seen these forever, for as long as I've been reading, other readers had the, these cards, and they had to be without the white border, which I just find, I don't know, just hate it. Because the white border on the backs of the cards reminds me of playing cards. And I think that's what it is. It's like it, anyway, aesthetically, these are, these are beautiful. Sorry about the glare, like I said at the start of the video, I'm still figuring out in their lighting. Um, so, this is a deck that I enjoy reading with, even though I'm not a complete fan of the art. This is like Art, art Nouveau or Art Deco, like a bit of one, a bit of the other, with 1970s uh, popped in. These weird pencil-drawn faces are freaking creepy. Um... It's definitely Rider weight in terms of system. It's very white, white background. Uh, the color palette is very 1970s, which I love. Um, but I do enjoy them. I mean, you know, I do enjoy them. I'm glad I pulled them out of the purgatory basket. And, I, and I'm revisiting them. These are, like I said, they're pretty much just right or wait, right? Except, um, I think what's different, I love this sun card. Like, this is so 1970. And I'm going to keep them because... Um, we lost the creator of this deck just this year, and um, I think it would be sad if I gave it away, or, you know, I think I'd miss it if I gave it away. The creator is David Palladini, and he also gave us, I think it's the new Palladini tarot, which I do not have, but I have these, and I'm going to hang on to these, because... Cooler head will prevail. Um, I find this to be a really usable, like very practical month for mundane readings. It's really fantastic. I don't think I've ever read from this deck in the little, in the brief time that I've had it, and gotten anything profound from it. But a lot of it had to do with what I went to the cards with in terms of intention of the reading. Um, what, what makes, what, what makes this deck stand out the most is these weird pencil drawn faces. Um, the color palette and the fact that the images are very two dimensional. These do not look three dimensional at all. They're very flat. But. They're very nice. I like them. And I won't be crazy. I won't be passing them on because now that the creator's gone, um, who, if, who knows, like judging by, if you look at the box, right, this is like the box design is very, is, is like the, the vintage version. And this one is um, the copyright, the, not the copyright, the printing on it is I think 1993. Um, these are probably limited in numbers anyway, what's available, unless they have a whole warehouse full of them, who knows. But if, uh, if you're a stickler for uh, this back, and if you don't care that, you know, because it's right or wait, it doesn't matter that it's Italian, then Italian's like, you know. If you're a collector and you like this back, it's a good value. I didn't, I didn't pay much for these. Okay, I spent a lot of time on that. The other deck I'm revisiting for December, 
and it's funny like the kind the, just the mix of decks and I lie there's there is a new one in the fold and it's my first edition Marielle this is trimmed edged I trimmed it all the way down to oh my god the glare huh? I trimmed mine all the way down to the image for the majors I didn't I didn't indicate what the cards are for the majors for the minors I put down what the card is so page and the element because for me the Mary L is a very elemental um, deck very earthy very elemental deck um, very elemental see earthy is not quite right either I I love this card and what I'm doing differently is like I'm doing my daily draws with Marielle which uh, may seem a bit much for daily draws like it's not like light reading right but at the same time I find this deck is very um, can all you know reads also very well for mundane issues you know mundane readings right your day-to-day -day kind of thing I love this card I I've yeah I love this for eight of swords so yeah so Marielle um, I may venture into the guidebook finally I've had this deck for a while um, Actually, I had a, I had I had obtained uh, the first edition a while back, and it was one of my first modifications. And I didn't like how it turned out, but someone did, so I gave it to them. And then I got this first edition just as the second edition was cut, was being released, or just as the second edition was released, and then I trimmed it the way I wanted it, right back right down to the image like I had done my first deck but ex but instead of writing things out and it looked I don't know I didn't like the way it looked I left the majors um, un untitled um, and I did what I did to the minors which I just told you and I'm repeating myself so yeah this is um, I don't always <laughs> I don't view it as a dark deck. Um, I do view it as confronting. Uh, it's quite psychological, but I don't. I don't view it as a dark deck. But at the same time, it's not the deck I would turn to when I'm feeling um, emotionally fragile, or you know what I mean. Like these are not um, because they're very good. Uh, it's a very good tool to mirror back to you your own psyche and uh, if you're already feeling fragile emotional you're already a little bit in that foggy place a little bit of that dim place not to say dark but you know what I'm saying you don't want to be looking at these images at least I don't the other tarot deck I pulled off my shelf uh, for December is this cutie oh my goodness and it's tarot the magical forest and I mentioned this before see mine's mine's I trimmed all the I trim, trimmed the borders off and I edged mine with this shade of green I love this deck again very very writer weight uh, it has that dreamy fuzzy quality to the artwork um, and when I did my original video on this deck when I first got it um, I still feel the same way this the artwork in this deck and the characters in this deck the landscape in this deck totally reflects my inner child landscape um, it just um, I had a rough childhood and I find these comforting because 
they're very comforting because they mirror back to me what my inner child landscape is. And in such a gentle way, like look at this, so gentle. The artwork also reminds me of uh, the storybook art that I remember from when I was a child. So I love this. So it's the kind of, you know, I, this is, and this is an all rounder for me. Like, you know, um, I think in previous video, I said something, oh, well, this is, you know, what I would use for inner child work. Well, I'm constantly mothering my inner child due to the kind of childhood I had. So, <laughs> um, this one's an all rounder. This is one you could read for anything. And, um, I remember when I received it, um, the texture felt a little, they're smoother now than they were when I first received them. They had a little bit of a rough, like almost like a layer of like a powdery, I couldn't, they almost had like a powdery kind of feel. And they smelled like, when I first got them, they smelled like oatmeal. So already it tapped into like, you know, um, what these things are. I love them. I love them. And like I said, these, these are just, they're writer weight and I love them and they're practical for any type of reading, whether it be mundane, more spiritual reading, no matter, no matter the subject. For me, these work. I love them and I love the backs too. It's a full package kind of thing. I love them. Now, and they have taken, uh, they have taken the place of my favorite um, deck in terms of like, you know, this cute, cute kind of deck. Um, even though I have other cute decks. I think I have one, though I have the Monstero uh, by Joanna Nelson. But I'll reach for these before I reach for the Monstero lately. That too can change. And the last tarot deck that I'm using this uh, first bit in, um, in December, thanks to my friend uh, Jen from Soul, Spirit to Soul, Soul to Sight. Oh my God, Jen. My friend Jen. Did I, I mentioned this in the Science to Soul Tarot. I mentioned this in a previous video when I couldn't when I couldn't remember her channel name. She's my friend now. It's like she's no longer a channel. She's a person, right? So now I can't remember her channel name. It's terrible. Okay. Thanks to her, I had had the guy uh, the uh, Dreams of Gaia Tarot. I had I had obtained one last year or the year before. I can't remember. And I returned it because the card stock, all the cards were, they, they were stuck together. They were um, chipped. It, they looked like shit. And um, they stuck. Um, so, but I missed it because um, they're very compelling. And Jen suggested I, that, you know, t well, she suge suggested, she says to me, well, mine are beautiful. They're fine. Hers are Blue Angel. So I went to Book Depository and ordered the Blue Angel ones. And the cardstock is very, very glossy, of course, like, you know, but very nice and slippery. They weren't chipped. They're beautiful. They didn't stick together. I edged mine in black. And I've been using these uh, probably since I received them. Um, just, I received them at the end of November, but I started using them at the start of December, first of December. And those of you who have seen this before know that this is a completely different system. This is not right away. This is not Toth. This is not Marseille. This is its own entity. And uh, there's so much information, um, in each card, um, they're very readable just looking at the images 
but the guidebook is and you know me about guidebooks the guy the guidebook is invaluable it's freaking fantastic it's a very psychological deck and um but what I do with these is that I, I can only pull one card at a time. I don't do a, you know, I don't do like my eight, my 12 card spread. I don't do a three card spread or anything like that. I pick one at a time and I just work with that card for as long as I need to um, with the guidebook. So I guess, I guess I work with it like I would an oracle. And I did get, before these arrived, or when they, or be, yeah, before I ordered these, um, I was at my local metaphysical shop here in my town, which is, do not recommend, but anyway. And I picked up um, the pocket size of the Dreams of Gaia, which are matte and pocket sized, but the titles are gone. It just has the Roman numeral for the majors and the element and the number for the minors and I really because I don't know these cards very well I really needed I really need to work with these and I think I like them better so I may have may have now I'm pretty sure I'll have that pocket edition up for swap because I'm really enjoying the full-size cards and um, yeah and finally the two oracles that I'm I've gone back to for December the first one I guess counts as two um, it's the soul deck soul cards one and two that I keep in one big bunch here one big deck and these I know I'm gonna say it again if I could have only one if someone said to me that's it you can only pick one oracle deck for the rest of your life. You have to let go of everything else. Then it would be these. They're extremely... Um, no keywords, no guidebook yet. Each card, when you pick a card, it, they're so readable. And they're so profound. And um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you pick a card at random, based on what your concern, question, or whatever, you know, your question is, your concern, um, the card will tell you, you know, the, whatever card you end up picking, whether, you know, you, I, I just pick them, like I just don't look. and The backs are different color, it doesn't matter. The card, for my experience has been, the card will always first mirror back to me what my question's about, what my concern's about. And the same image will then um, give me advice. So, and reassure me. These are, this is a very reassuring deck. This, I believe that, um, this deck really is um, your spirit guides communicate with you through this deck or at least that for me I feel like my spirit guides communicate with me through this deck um, so yeah love it and another one that I use this all the time for readings for other people all the time since I got this this is probably my most used Oracle deck and I, I never talk about it or I have spoken about it in the past but and it's the uh, Vintage Wisdom Oracle. And I trimmed mine. I took the borders off. And I think this f is, like, in my opinion, uh, the best mass-produced Oracle deck on the market. And that's saying a lot. Especially because that's, like, it, it takes a lot of nerve for me to say that because I don't own that many. But I own quite a few uh, Oracle decks. And I have to say the titles are on these... Um, the titles or keywords, whatever you want to call them, on the bottom, it covers a beautiful range. Uh, the full range of 
human experience, um, human condition, human traits. And the images, this is um, probably, this is the only collage deck that I actually love the art. I find that it's well executed. And it's my love of this deck that made me finally pull the trigger on Gasp, an independently produced um, oracle, uh, Divine Muses oracle, because it's similar art style and I think they would play really well together. I literally ordered that one because I felt it would play really well with my favorite. So that's it. That's what I'm working with. This uh, What I've been working with this first week of December. I'm probably going to continue working with these um, this week as well. Um, this one I'm always working with. My um, wisdom, wisdom, vintage wisdom oracle. Um, but yeah, I, that's what I'm playing with. Um, for now, for the month of December. Um, if I change it up, I'll uh, post another video and share with you what I changed it up to. And um, as the as 2019 winds down, uh, I already posted about depth year in November because my depth, my 2019, like my first depth year ended uh, October 31st, and I've already begun my second depth year because I'm not ready to go wide. I'm really enjoying um, the fruit or the fruits of um, my first depth year, which was um, which started in November of 2018. And I'm, I'm really happy with, with um, where I am with that. Um, but I'm also going to um, share with you, like, you know, for the, for 2020, um, maybe I'll share with you my spread of the year, like the year ahead spread that I uh, draw for myself. Maybe not, if it's alarming. Um, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it open because I don't know. I don't know how much time I'm going to have. And I don't know what it is I'm going to want to talk about. So I'll just leave it open. Anyway, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Sending you so much love. And have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.